One of the really cool things about the derivative is that it gives us the rate of change of a function. That's really what the derivative is, and you can see it in this notation dy by dx. That's one of the ways we write the derivative. And what that's really saying is the change in y with respect to the change in x, y being the function. So when you change x by a certain amount, how much does the function change? That's what a derivative tells you. That slope of the line tangent to the curve, that's a, a geometric representation of this concept of the change, uh, the rate of change of a function. Because the derivative represents the rate of change of a function, we can use it to solve all kinds of great problems. For example, we have this one. A point moves on the curve, and we have this curve, so that's some kind of an ellipse. I'll just draw an ellipse here. So a point is, you know, cruising along on this curve, and it says, it moves on the curve so that the y-coordinate increases at the constant rate of 14 meters per second. So maybe it's coming up this slope here, and the rate at which it's rising is a constant 14 meters per second. And the question is, so if it's constantly rising 14 meters per second, here the x is going to be moving very little because it's almost vertical, but here the x would be moving a lot if the y is moving at 14 meters per second. So there's a variable rate at which the x coordinate is increasing as a point moves along this curve. So the question here is, at what rate is the x coordinate changing when x is at 6 meters, when x equals 6 meters? And we'll assume that y is greater than 0, so we're keeping this above um, the, the y-axis. So how do we approach this one? Well, because we're dealing with rates, we can take the derivative of this function, and the derivative will give us rates. What we're going to do, because we're dealing with time here, uh, the point moves along this curve in time, is we're going to do a kind of implicit uh, derivation here, differentiation, where we take the, the derivative of each of these terms with respect to time. Let me show you how we do that first. So we have 3x squared. I can take the derivative of that. I get 6x but I'm going to put dx dt. So that's the derivative of x with respect to t. I'll do the same thing to the y term. So I've got minus, and that would be 8y dy dt. And then over here is 72. Well, that's a constant. Whenever you take the derivative of a constant, you get 0. So that's just going to be 0. I don't need to write any um, other term over here. That 0 is just going to disappear for us. I'm going to rewrite this equation by adding 8y dy dt to both sides. So I've got 6x dx dt equals 8y dy dt. So all I've done so far is taken the derivative of this equation with respect to time and rearranged the terms. Now we've got an x term multiplied by dx dt, and dx dt is the rate of change of x with respect to t. And we've got 8y times dy dt, and dy dt is the rate of change of y with respect to t. Now they're telling us that the y coordinate increases at the constant rate of 14 meters per second. So I can replace this part with 14. So let's go ahead and do that. 6x dx dt equals 8y times 14. And over here, well, dx dt, that's what we're looking for, so this term is going to stay there. But they're asking about the rate, dx over dt, when x equals 6 meters. So I can plug 6 in here. So 6 times 6 times dx dt equals 8. Now I've still got a y here. What is y when x equals 6? Well, that's even easy enough to figure out. I can just take the x value, 6, plug it in here, and then solve for y. So if I did that, let me do it over here, I would have 3 times 6 squared, which is 36, minus 4y squared equals 72. And let's see, so, oh, that's two 36s, and if I subtract three 36s, this would be negative 4y squared equals negative 36. Divide by negative one, uh, 4, I get y squared equals 9. And we'll take the square root of both sides, and we get y equals 3. We don't have to worry about the negative 3 from taking the square root because we've been told to assume that y is greater than 0. So 
I've got 3 for my y value. So instead of 8y, this is 8 times 3 times 14. And I've filled in everything in this equation except dx dt. That's the rate of change of x. That's what we want to find. So I can just go ahead and crunch the numbers now and solve this. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's see, we've got 36 dx dt. And 8 times 3 is 24. This looks like 336. And then we'll divide both sides by 36 to solve for dx dt. And we get dx dt equals, let's see, that's 56 over 6, 28. Looks like 28 thirds. And this is the rate, and our units in the original problem were meters and seconds. So this is going to be meters per second. So that's one type of related rate problem. Let's do another. Here's a typical related rate problem where uh, a spherical balloon, so a balloon that happens to be in the shape of a perfect sphere, is being inflated with gas at the rate of 448 cubic feet per minute. This term rate should uh, put your antenna up right away so you know you're going to have a formula for this volume of the sphere and take the derivative and that's going to give you the rate at which the volume is changing. The question is how fast is the radius of the balloon increasing at the instant that the radius is 4 feet. So let's start here with a formula for the volume of the sphere and that is volume equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. And then we're going to go ahead and take the derivative. When I do that over here I'm going to get and, and again, I'm going to do this with respect to time because this is a process that's happening over time. I get dv dt, the rate of the, that the volume is changing with respect to time, and that is this. So that's good already. And then let's see, the threes would cancel. We'd get 4 pi r squared dr dt. dr dt is the rate that the radius is changing with respect to time and that's what we're going to want to find. Now the next part here is they're asking how fast this radius is changing when the radius is 4 feet. So that's what we can plug in for r here. So we got dv dt equals 4 times pi times 4 squared is 16 dr dt and we can plug in our rate that they've given us for the, uh, how fast the balloon is being inflated. That's 448 cubic feet for a minute. And now we have 4 times pi times 16 uh, times dr dt. And all we really have to do is divide by 4 pi times 16. So that's actually 64 pi. So that would cancel and divide this by 64 pi. And let's see, 448 divided by 64, I think that's going to be 7 over pi equals dr dt. So the rate at which the radius is changing at that moment when the radius is 4 feet is 7 pi over pi. And this would be, since it's the radius, it's just a length, it's not a, a volume. So uh, this is just going to be feet per minute. Feet and minutes were our original uh, units. All right, let's try one more typical type of related rates problem. Here we're filling up a swimming pool and it's got a shallow end and a deep end. So here is the top of the pool. It's two feet deep in the shallow end. The deep end gets up to seven feet deep. And what they're telling us is that the pool um, is being filled at three cubic feet per minute. So that's how much the volume is changing. So we want a formula for the volume of this pool. And this is a tricky shape, so we kind of have to think about this. Um, it's at the moment that the water has filled three feet of the deep end. So if you think about it, this is seven feet here. We've got two feet of shallowness. So here's five feet. That's when um, it's going to be even with this side right there. And at that point, the length here is going to be 30. And then we're asking about, they're asking about the point when it's 3 feet. So the shape of this volume at that point, we're kind of lucky because it's, it's a simple, well, relatively simple 
uh, triangular prism. So to figure out the volume of this amount in here, you would take the area of this triangle, and if you th this is actually a right triangle, so the formula for the area of a triangle is one-half base times height. The base is actually going to be here, it's kind of an upside-down triangle, and the height would be here, which is good because that's what we're trying to, trying to determine, the rate of change of the height. And let's see, when it's three, now we have a, a similar triangle thing going on here. When it's five, when the height is five, the base of the triangle is 30. So actually, the uh, height equals the base times six. Sorry, backwards. The base equals the height times six. That's better. Okay, now, and I'm doing this because we want to write our our formula for the volume in terms of just the height. Otherwise we can't figure this one out. So volume, one-half base times height times the, the width of this prism, which is 10 feet. So our volume is going to be one-half base times height times uh, 10, okay? And we're going to substitute in for this B, we're going to substitute in 6H so that we have this just in terms of H. So one-half times 6h times h times 10. If I simplify that, I get the volume equals 30h squared. All right, now we can take our derivative. So with respect to time, we get dv dt equals 60h dh dt. Here, this is the rate that the pool is being filled. We know that's 3. This is the rate that the height is changing, and that's what we want to find out. So all we have to do is plug in 3 here, and they're asking for the moment when it's um, 3 feet uh, off the deep end. So height is 3 there. So let's plug both those values in. So we have 3 equals 60 times 3 dh dt. And you do the math on this, and what you find is that dh dt is 1 60th and the units here are feet, and the time is minutes. So those are a few examples of related rates problems. They're a little bit complicated, take a little bit of work, um, but they're definitely doable. My name is Larry. I'm a teacher at EdVisions Off Campus. It's an online project-based school in Minnesota. If you're interested, you can check us out on the web at lovethisschool.org. Thanks.